Hello, I'm Nana Wrinklewings and welcome to Whimsical Rhymes and Tales. Today's story is about the appreciation of family and the appreciation of harvest, which is in the fall. And that's when the farmers are in the fields and then they can deliver their crops so that we can have them on our table to eat for the rest of the year. So let's get started. The name of my story is Mimi and Me, The Harvest. So my Mimi, she lives in a small Midwest town with us. Her silver hair is all tied up in a braid and her apron always smells like fresh baked cookies. She teaches me many things about life. Well, one fall afternoon, Mimi and I, we were sitting on the porch and we were shucking corn for dinner. The air was crisp and fresh, and I, I looked at the huge maple trees that lined the streets in front of our house. They had started to drop their dark red and burnt orange leaves, and I'd picked a few that I really liked, and I'd pressed them in a very big, heavy book. Many yards had piles of leaves that had been raked earlier in the day, but the breeze rustled them a bit, and they scattered once again. Squirrels scampered up and down the trees. The sweet corn is good this year, Mimi said as she tasted a kernel. It's really sweet. You can prick a kernel with your fingernail and just see how juicy it is. When I was young, she continued, way back when kids dressed up like robots and rag dolls and astronauts for Halloween, well, I remember watching the fields of corn grow. We hoped that the tall green fields would be knee-high by the 4th of July. You know, we still have a high school mascot, and it's named for an ear of corn. Then at harvest time in the fall, the farmers, they would start up their tractors, and they would pick the corn from morning till night. You could see the tractors pulling wagon loads of corn from the fields to the canneries. Well, my friends and I, we used to stand on the corner with our little red wagons and ask the tractor driver to throw us a few ears of corn. Please throw us some corn, please. Well, most of the time, they just smiled and they reached back and, and then they would throw us a few ears and we would run home because then we knew we would have fresh sweet corn for dinner. Well, it was a lot of fun. And a lot of people in the town worked in the canneries. That's where they would can the corn and they'd ship it to other towns. Did you ever work in the cannery, Mimi? I asked. Oh, I did. A lot of the older kids worked in the summer. So I, did you know that the average ear of corn has 800 kernels in 16 rows and that a the corn will always have an even number of rows on each cob. Really, I said. Really, you know, we would have hayride parties during the harvest time and a big tractor pulled a wooden wagon up and down the country roads and we would just sit in that wooden wagon and we'd sing to the stars. Well, after the hayride, we would go roast hot dogs and marshmallows over a campfire. Tell me more, Mimi, I said. I'd love to hear what it was like when you were growing up. Well, because everyone had worked so hard to plant and pick the corn, there was a celebration, much like you have today for the fall harvest. And like now, there was a huge parade. People would get up early in the morning and they'd drive their cars downtown and they'd find a good space and they'd park just waiting to watch the parade. There were big, beautiful floats. Mimi, did you ever help make the floats, I ask? I did one year, she answered. Well, how do you make a float? I was so curious. Well, I'm not an expert, but I can tell you a little. First of all, you need a wooden frame and you have to have it on wheels, kind of like a stage and then you cover it with chicken wire because chicken wire has all those holes in it. You know what that's like. And next you take 
colored tissue paper and you stuff all of those holes with the tissue. A car is then hooked to the float and it pulls it. Each float was different. One year there was a huge pipe organ playing on the float and many times people would dress up in costumes and they would ride on them. Anyone could make a float. For example, if a school made a float, maybe it might look like a football field with football players. Or if a church had a float, it might show a couple that was getting married. Everyone would wave to the people as they were watching the parade and many times the people on the float would throw candy or balloons. Just like today, there was a pageant and the contestants from many states would come and they would ride on the convertibles and they would have a contest and they would sing and they would dance. I can't wait for Labor Day this year, Mimi. Well, our parade also had marching bands from all the schools in the area and there would be baton twirlers and majorettes and there were big, huge drums that, that would make me jump if they played in front of me. And, and the horns, you could hear them coming even if they were four blocks away. What else did they have, Mimi, I ask? I was sitting on the edge of my seat. Well, let me think. There were clowns. There were clowns running through the streets and into the crowds and making people laugh and there were huge tricycles and sometimes they'd be riding a unicycle that just had one wheel. And there were people on stilts and sometimes famous cowboys and on horses and, and a funny hot dog mobile one year. But the best part of all, as always, was at the end of the parade. My eyes grew big in anticipation. The steam engine, I yelled out. Yes, Mimi said. The old black steam engine rolled slowly down the street with steam bellowing from its smokestack and you could hear its loud, deep whistle for miles. It cooks the corn as it heads down to the park gates, you know. It's so fun that a steam engine cooks corn, I said. I, I guess, I guess it's been doing it for years. I can't wait. Yes, and after the parade, like today, everyone would rush to the park and they would stand in long lines just to eat some of that wonderful sweet corn. It was warm and it was dripping with butter and, and it's always been free. I'm starting to get hungry, Mimi. Me too. It, it was delicious corn. We're almost done. Let me tell you about the carnival at the park with all the kinds of games and rides. If you listen quietly, you can hear the music from the carousel even blocks away. I know, Mimi. I love it when the carousel comes to town. Well, I always like to ride on the white Palomino pony, Mimi said. And there's this ride that would lift you up high in the air. And I would not move a muscle until they started up again. But when you're on the top, guess what? You can see the whole town. Well, maybe we can ride it together this year, Mimi, I said. Hmm, Mimi thought for a moment. Mm, sure, why not? Um, it would be special to share some memories with her granddaughter. She knew that, as long as she sat still when it reached the top, because Mimi did not like heights. So, of course, there was always cotton candy and taffy apples, but you know what my favorite was, Mimi said? It was the candy apples. Oh, mine is the saltwater taffy, I said. Well, there used to be people who would guess your age or your weight, Mimi continued, and if they were wrong, you won. And there was a house with mirrors that made you look silly. And there were pony rides and, and demolition car derbies and, and tractor pulls. There were lots of games like ring toss and bean bag throws and fish ponds and whack of something. And Mimi made me laugh. 
I remember this huge glass box with a crane and you had to try to pick up things in the box with the crane from the outside, of course. Well, it wasn't very easy. And there were always great prizes if you won any of the games. I know one year I won a lamp and then another I won a pitcher, I believe, with, with juice glasses that I gave to my mom. And I don't know if those games are still there, but we'll have to go see. I'd like to win a huge teddy bear, I said. Mimi smiled. When I was young and it got really dark out, we would all sit on blankets on the top of our cars and we would watch the fireworks. It was sparkling colors all over the sky. Sometimes there were fireworks that were displayed in the park. And I remember one year there was an American flag. It was beautiful. My uncle used to set the fireworks off. Really, I said. I looked up at her in amazement as I tried to imagine what it, it must have been like. Now we really should try to hurry in with this corn because I'm sure the water is already boiling, Mimi said. Check the garden and see if there are any ripe tomatoes that you can pick for dinner. Hurry now, I think we're both hungry. So I ran to the garden thinking about all the things my Mimi had told me. And as I looked for the ripest tomatoes, I thought about how she always said that it's important to eat my vegetables today, because guess what? Tomorrow, they'd be in the soup. And she said to drink my milk so that I would grow up big and strong. And she never ever passed up warm apple pie when it was served because, she said later, that would probably be gone. I would smile and I knew she was right. It's not just the apple pie, Mimi said, with a twinkle in her eye. You never want to pass up a chance to do something for yourself or for someone else today because you may not get that chance tomorrow. It's like the sunshine. If you want to play outside, you should do it today, right? Because tomorrow it may rain. Now, I love to play outside, so I would always head right for my swing or the teeter-totter, and I would play for hours. Well, that night, we sat on the back steps in the dark, waiting to see a falling star as lightning bugs cruised through the autumn skies. I could hear the locusts. Mimi looked up at the sky. You know, there are children all over the world, just like you, she said. Just like me, I asked. Yes, they may speak different languages, Mimi said, and they may not all look exactly alike, but that's what makes each child special. I thought about it for a while. Mimi was quiet as if she was thinking, I'm so proud of you. I know that, that you're a friend to everyone and, and I want you to be that way for the rest of your life. Always remember to stay just as you are today. Be a friend to others. Keep an open mind and an open heart. You remember the squirrels we saw today, Mimi said. Yes, I answered. Have you ever wondered how those squirrels know to hide nuts in preparation for colder weather? Then how do they find them when they're hungry? How does a bee know where to get pollen? Or how to make a hive and honey? How do caterpillars turn into beautifully colored butterflies? And how do the birds know to fly south for the winter? I didn't know the answer to any of those questions. Well, the world is such an amazing place, Mimi said. Each person, each living thing is very special. And we learn from watching and listening to the world. I looked into her deep brown eyes and I wondered what she had seen through all the years. And I believe that each tiny wrinkle 
on her face stood for one of those 84 years. I tried to understand some of what she was telling me. She wanted me to make each day special. She wanted me to be curious about the world around me. She wanted me to take the time to look around and hug my family and be kind to others. My Mimi was so wise. I learned a lot from her. And I will never turn down apple pie when it's served. For tomorrow, it may be gone. Oh, and I like mine with vanilla ice cream. I hope you enjoyed that story. I think we can learn a lot from others. And maybe, maybe you would like to find some special leaves this fall and press them between the pages of a heavy book. Or perhaps you would want to go out in a very dark night and, and see if you can see some falling stars. Maybe you'd like to make some taffy apples or roast marshmallows. And what about having a parade with others and marching down the sidewalk? Fall is such a special season and harvest time is always so much fun. And don't forget to enjoy the fresh sweet corn. For now you know how many kernels are on each ear of corn. That's all for today. Toodaloo.